innovation. Innovation is you get knocked down, you get up. You get knocked down, you get up. You get knocked down, you get up. You must fail. So what is innovation? Yo creo que innovación es hacer algo más de lo que actualmente se ha hecho. Bueno, para mí la innovación es eh, agregar algo diferente, algo eh, novedoso a un proceso, a un producto, a un servicio. Innovation to me is when some people get together, create a wonderful idea, are able to put it down on a piece of paper, present it to some people that are not friends and family, and you know, get a super feedback that allows them to say, this is a project that is worthwhile going on with. Apart from their three answers, research shows that innovation is not only about new markets and new technologies, but rather the methods that go behind the creation of those technologies. Peru's infrastructure over the years has grown. In terms of our education and our economy, we've never been better. We're not quite Silicon Valley or Wall Street, but we're getting there. And the important thing is that we've gone through constant growth. We're not blind. Peru still has a long way to go to be considered an innovative country. Considering we're number 69 on the Global Innovation Index, a ranking published by these two organizations, you could say Peru's is in its prototype phase, trying out new things to foster domestic innovation and further create economic growth. Peru would do better as a country if they adopted some practices from already innovative countries, learning from example and fostering innovation. The Global Innovation Index is a report produced by Cornell University, INSEED, and the World Intellectual Property Organization, created to measure inputs and outputs of innovation across a set measurement scale. Currently, Switzerland is ranked number one on the Global Innovation Index. So, why is Switzerland on top? If Peru wants to foster innovation in the country domestically, they need to do three things. Bruno Lanvin says that these three things are the keys to making an innovative country. They have generally fostered uh, education. Uh, second, they have also nurtured the uh, climate of investment around innovation. And last but not least, uh, they have also um, built strong and dynamic uh, structures of, of innovation. That is the institutional part of it, which should not be neglected. Let's take a look at two of those factors, as well as an output measurement, and compare and contrast between number one and number 69. Number one, government policy. Switzerland is a platform of a country for new business ventures. In fact, it takes about 104 procedures, six days, and 18% annual income per capita to start a new business. In 2013, they were ranked number 27 on the Doing Business website for government policy. Innovation-focused pools of capital need to be available at the federal level for regions to leverage existing resources, spur collaboration, and support job creation in high-growth industries. Forbes' Rebecca Obegli. Peru's government doesn't provide the opportunities that it could for businesses to grow and work faster. In fact, it takes 63 procedures, 5 days, and about 25% annual income per capita to start a business. In 2013, we were ranked 39 in the world on the Doing Business website. Peru's procedures are less, but we fail to weed out businesses that may not have the potential or structural integrity to add value to the economy. Number 2. Education The education system in Switzerland is very diverse, and it's mostly due to the Swiss Constitution. It pretty much says that all children from ages 0 to 18 should have accessibility to free, good public education. The importance the Swiss place on their education system is incredible. It's earned them number one in education, according to the World Economic Forum's competitiveness report, and has even helped them pump out some of the most well-educated and innovative graduates in the world. Their tuition ranges from 750 to 3,000 euro a semester, whereas the average in the US is 20,000 for the whole four years. Do the math. By making education affordable and accessible, they're making their country one of the most highly trained and well-educated countries and ready to produce innovation. The Peruvian Ministry of Education announced today that public school students would see their weekly schedules increase from 35 to 45 hours in the classroom. Flavio Figalo of the Ministry of Education told Andina that our challenge is to expand the complete schedule in the 8,000 public schools that exist all over the country. By having highly trained and well-educated graduates in the country, the potential for innovation increases. The Peruvian government plans an annual increase in the education budget by $500 million, starting in 2015. 
a figure which represented 0.25% of the country's current GDP, as said by Prime Minister René Cornejo. Keep in mind, education is important. These steps aren't easy, or even simple. Peru's got a long ways to go, and I've said it before, but the thing is, we're confident that Peru can successfully foster innovation. The most relevant aspect of the economy that is affected by innovation is growth. Growth is positive change in the economy. Innovation is the change in mindset, the production of ideas. Logically, some of these ideas end up providing new jobs, more capital, and a new product released on the market. We don't really have to be specific with what type of innovation we're dealing with, mostly because innovation will eventually cause the same impact. Technological, medical, even social innovation will eventually get to the same spot. Innovation generates economic growth. The most successful countries in the world are those that are pushing the boundaries for innovation. The USA has the most renowned private sector and it's known for its innovative Silicon Valley. Switzerland, on the other hand, uses more of a socialist economy, taxing smartly but lightly, and relies on the government to create their innovation. Success comes from both. The USA has a Silicon Valley, the most uh, defined and famous private sector innovation hub, where Google and Apple and so many undefined potential startups will make their fortune. But Switzerland has a government sector that provides free public service, better education, and even trash that they have to import to keep up with their recycling plants. Success comes from both. Considering both the private sector and the government fall into the Global Innovation Index, we would ideally have both sectors develop and improve. The problem is, it's not that easy. By having a strong private sector and a strong government, we can improve our performance across the board and make our ranking no longer number 69, but something better on the Global Innovation Index. If Peru wants to continue its decade of economic growth, they should promote innovation in all sectors, such that they can keep moving forward. The key to Peru's future is constant disruptive innovation. Now we just have to foster it. Keep this in mind as we analyze a cycle we like to call the innovation cycle. It outlines exactly what should happen and what will happen to produce long-term economic growth through innovation. Innovative education leads to innovative startups and companies. Over time, these companies grow, which leads to improvement in growth in the Lima economy. This growth causes more tax revenue, some of which is redistributed back into education. As time goes on, we we'll see more and more revolutions around the cycle, which will, in turn, produce more economic growth. We hope Peru remains in a constant state of growth. We hope Peru becomes an innovation nation.